Welcome to the BIF Talks of this 35th Braunschweig International Film Festival. My name is Clara Hense and I have the great privilege and honor to be holding those BIF Talks with directors, actors and other guests of this festival. BIF Talks is an open discussion format. We want to get in touch with the people behind the films and get to know the films better. Hello, Alex Camilleri. We will talk about your film Lutsu. Hello. Lutsu is uh, located in Malta. Why that? I always wanted to make films in Malta. It was a dream for a very long time. My parents emigrated from Malta to the United States just before I was born. Uh, but we always kept close ties to the island. And uh, whenever I would be back there, uh, I'd feel more connected to uh, my own heritage. But my imagination would just feel stronger there. And uh, I, I couldn't help but coming up with stories uh, to tell in Malta. And as I got older, I, I sensed that there were no Maltese films being made. It's kind of a, a dark spot on the, the map of world cinema. There, there are not a lot of um, uh, national indigenous films coming out of Malta. So that kind of clarified um, what I should do with my interests and to marry my love of cinema to my love of Malta. And this film is very much a result of that almost lifelong journey. And uh, for the audience here in Braunschweig, but also internationally, they will get to know Maltese, a very rarely spoken language in cinema, as you already said. How was shooting a Maltese for you? Well, uh, first of all, it's a great privilege to be able to take audiences to Malta, many of them for the very first time, and to introduce them to the island not as a tourist, which is in often how the island is portrayed, even in many ways how the island portrays itself. But we wanted to take uh, people to Malta uh, to experience it like a citizen would, to be on the street and to encounter the experiences of day-to-day -day life. And a big part of that is using um, the, the local language, which is Maltese. Um, it's a, uh, an interesting language. The, the root of it is Arabic, but it um, uses the um, Roman alphabets and has picked up some influence of the Romance languages over centuries. Uh, so putting that on film was uh, just a privilege. Um, in Malta, the people who see the film are hearing their own language used uh, in cinema for the first time, and that's meant a lot to them. And uh, I, I love the, the texture of the language. It adds something very special to this film, um, like the, the other factors that are very authentic. We used real fishermen portraying the, the chief roles in the, in the film, and I think all of these elements add up to make a very special film. You also introduce us to lutsus, which are the traditional boats in Malta, and to the fishermen, which are non-professional actors. How did you find these actors, and main, mainly the main actor, which has already won, won prizes at Cannes? Yeah, well, you know, it was my uh, mission from the very beginning to work with non-actors. I knew it would be easier to train a fisherman to be an actor. Uh, that would be easier than to train an actor to be a fisherman. But that doesn't mean it was easy uh, to find who we were looking for. Really, the only way to find a fisherman for a role like this is to drive around the island, to go from village to village, and ask around. And I, I did that over a series of months with my casting director, who is a terrific um, comrade in this effort. And uh, after months of searching and not finding who we were looking for, uh, we found Jesmark and David, who are the, the fishermen in the film. They play characters kind of based on their own lives, so the characters are also named Jesmark and David. But we found them almost at the last minute, and I was due to fly back from Malta to New York. I had one day left in my casting search, and on that day, uh, like something out of a movie, we found them at the last minute. And um, I asked them to do a, a really quick screen test. I had a small camera, and they, uh, I asked them to kind of just improvise a scene, um, and I described it very loosely to them, but their performance in that screen test, the first time they were ever on camera, it was so good and so alive, it gave me the courage to cast them in the film and, and to rewrite the script around them. And that's what we did, and we went on a journey together. We worked uh, rehearsing the film over the course of two years before we actually shot the film. So it's been a, a long journey with a lot of growth, uh, and um, I'm so proud of what they accomplished in the film. 
And on this very small island, Malta, you deal with very big topics, no? With uh, global chains of supply, with um, the really big pressure on, on people to maintain themselves in a very crucial system of capitalism, at least, in, in the very basic sense. How did you transfer all that to this very local environment? Well, it's, it's so fascinating to look at Malta and sometimes when you make a story very small, it actually can become very big. And what was crucial to me from the outset with this story was that it was not nostalgic. We weren't trying to paint a uh, picture of yesteryear of what the... Um, the sentimental idea of a Maltese fisherman was. That seemed to be the only definition of what people knew of fishing in Malta. But when I began my research, I saw that all of the very modern forces that you were referring to, like, I mean, the forces of capitalism, of big business, the, the role of EU regulation, even climate change and migration, all of these forces were coming down to bear on uh, the local fishermen. So uh, it provided a very unique opportunity, which is that just by telling it in a very tight first-person point of view, uh, you could actually get to all those big issues that are very interesting to me personally and, and to many uh, audiences around the world because they, they touch us all. Uh, there's no escaping um, many of these things. Um, and they're in the headlines of a newspaper on any continent you go to. and it's still true that they are, um, you know, there in Malta as well. Malta's not an exception from that rule, and that really unlocked the film for me, is that it, it could, at once it could engage with tradition, but still be very modern. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you, um, after this filming process, after this research also, what is your, your opinion on the position of tradition in an ever-changing world? Is there even a place or where can it locate yourself, itself, tradition and traditional fishing, for example? Well, um, you know, I related very much to this world and this character, even though I knew nothing about fishing before starting this film. In fact, I had never gone fishing in my life, and I actually get seasick very easily. So. This wasn't the most natural story for me to set out to tell. But there was something deeper that resonated uh, with me uh, when I started just talking to fishermen. What I realized was that in my own family, um, growing up uh, in an immigrant family in the United States, uh, it seemed that such a family has to make decisions about what parts of your heritage you have to let go of in order for the next generation to thrive in a new context. I saw my parents make those choices, you know, in our own family. And when I interviewed fishermen, I realized very much the same thing was happening to them. They were part of a really, really beautiful tradition, but were the last in the line of this um, heritage. And they had to make a decision, you know, can I allow it to go on any further? And the answer for many of the fishermen was no. Um, they were very clear-eyed about what was happening, and many were doing everything that they could to get their children out of the fishing trade. When I heard that, um, of course it was deeply um, sad in a way, um, but they were, um, they were saying in a very unsentimental way, but I could tell beneath the surface there must be a lot of heartbreak. So, you know, that was so much at the, at the root of this film, that, that tension between tradition and modernity. The film doesn't really offer very easy answers, but I do think that in order to move forward, you know, you have to let go of things in the past, and we all have to, in big ways or small ways in our life, at some point we come up against this, which is um, growing up is painful, and sometimes growth requires, um, you know, killing the past versions of ourselves, and there's no way around that, really. Um, try as we might to, to hold on. Um, it's, a, it's a tough part of life, but I think it's true, and that's what this film, you know, just tries to portray. Not to give answers, but to just kind of pay tribute to that process of evolution, essentially. 
and you find amazing uh, images for that. I, I just remember this image of this little um, baby's footprint on the traditional Lutsu boat. Um, I was impressed by that. Thank you. Um, you're coming here to Braunschweig also to have Q&As. What do you expect from that? Well, it's my favorite part of this whole process, if you can believe it. Uh, the Q&As are always so different. Um, I've been lucky enough to go to a, a few different countries now with the film. Uh, this is our German premiere, I believe, so the first time with a, with a German audience. And the, the questions, uh, I'm always so excited to hear from the audience what parts of the film resonate with them. Like you mentioned, the, the film does touch on many different kinds of issues. Um, there's a universality of, about the story, so I think a lot of people can relate to it, no matter what part of the world that they're from, and they don't need to know anything about fishing or Malta, really, to, to enjoy the story. But it, it, does, it is true that different elements in the story get expressed differently uh, depending on the audience. And so I don't know what to expect, but I, I just know that it'll probably be different than every other place that we've shown the film. So that makes me very excited to be here. So thank you for being here. Thank you for traveling to Braunschweig. Thank you for sharing your movie with us. Thank you so much. It's great to be here.